Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday the 16th of May 2016 and ending Friday the 20th. Hope we had a great trading week. We certainly did here, both in stocks and futures overall. Here's a look at the, I think, stocks. A lot of weeks we've had futures outperforming stocks, but this week it was definitely, I think, on the stock side with Thursday and Wednesday in particular. Real nice trading week overall. Uh, here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the S&P in futures form, which is the proper way to look at the market. We've talked many times about this 13 sell signal that happened right at the beginning of April or middle of April. Ran into the risk line from that signal, could not get through. So that signal is still in place. And we had a startup, downward startup, almost completed nine bar startup, and it did not finish because of the rally that we saw on Tuesday, then Wednesday we rolled over, and that made Thursday the likely day to really come in, and that's when Apple broke, and Apple has not rallied. We'll look at that in a minute. So things do not look good for the market. This looks like it could pick up speed at some point in time. Unfortunately, I'm going to be mostly out Monday and Tuesday on a situation I have to take care of. Uh, that will not affect the reports. There will not be a market preview Monday night going into Tuesday, uh, but I won't be in the room much, if at any, if at all. So hopefully the market waits for me. I don't want this thing to tank and I'm not going to take advantage of it because uh, we certainly had a good day Thursday when everything fell apart. Here's a look at the, uh, so again, you can see we're hanging at this point in time. This does not look good, generally speaking. And again, with that nine bar startup recycled or reset, flipped, the red line is one of the options for a target. So just keep that in mind. It's a long way down. Don't be holding stocks. Uh, here's a look at the crude oil. 13 cell signal work there. Has not completed their what its target would be rallied back up a bit on Wednesday and Thursday, but it's still holding under the risk line there. Uh, gold up four dollars and thirty cents on Friday. So the S and P lost seventeen fifty on Friday, down quite a bit. NDX was down sixteen twenty eight. By the way, the Nasdaq doesn't look good there either, does it? Sox was up two points, not a big deal. Biotech's up twenty one ninety, but sitting very near the lows. VIX up 63 cents again, closing out at 15.04. The trend, look at this, 2.31. That's a high close for the trend. That brings the trend up to 1.41, the 10-day moving average of the trend. That is a high, high, high reading for that moving average. It does not usually stay up this high. Mm -hmm. NASDAQ volume, only 1.5 billion shares. Now, see, again, the, what were the two best trading days of the week? Wednesday and Thursday. What were the two best volume days of the week? Wednesday and Thursday. See how that works? Advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ, negative 4.98. Advanced decline ratio on New York on Friday, negative 1,026. Google lost $3.24, still holding mid-range for the last six months. Apple actually closed up 18 cents after being higher most of the day. Then they sold it off, came into negative territory a bit. But here's the thing. You know, these last two days are still the lowest closes of the last year on Apple. Amazon down $8, but who cares when it's up that high. New closing high the day before. Netflix gained all of 14 cents. Friday was really slow. There wasn't much going on. Uh, you got to be careful and not overtrade those types of days. Here's Tesla, which completed the nine bar startup phase of the downside. So, in this case, I'll give you an example. This one had the 13 sell signal back at the end of March. This nine bar startup phase completing to the downside. You have two options to get to that or get to the red line. One or the other means that it's at least run its course. So, at this point, that sell signal has run its course. All right, let's take a look at the intraday action in the futures just so you can see this is the week. So, Monday flat opening, pretty much sideways, cup and handle forms ish, closed about where you started. Tuesday, gap up and kept going to gap and go day. We did all right on Tuesday, but gap and goes are never my favorite. Wednesday, gap down, filled the gap on the oil number. That was weird. And then rolled over and declined all day. A real nice trading day on Wednesday. Thursday, this is the gap up and just sell off sharply. Really good in everything. Apple tank, that's where Apple broke. Everything good. Friday, it was really boring for the first half of the day. It did sell off in the late part of lunch, which is a strange time for that to happen. And then the last hour was dead flat. NASDAQ side looks, you know, pretty similar. Actually, it's the thing about the NASDAQ side is for the week, it's actually closed up a couple points. You look at the ES, it's down a couple points. But overall, pretty much the same concept of what they do. All right, let's take a quick look at the economic data that's coming out this week. Now, keep in mind, this is options expiration week. So I'm not going to be around Monday and most Tuesday, but Wednesday is the most likely day for options unraveling. If it's not Wednesday, then Thursday. Friday is expiration, which by definition means Friday is probably going to be boring. So, Empire Manufacturing, Housing Market Index, Net Long-Term Tick Flows, that's Monday. Tuesday, CPI, that can move the market. Housing starts in building permits, industrial production, and capacity utilization. It's all out before the bell. So that's a lot that could set us up for a move Tuesday morning. Wednesday, MBA Mortgage Index, Crude Oil Inventories, and the minutes from the last Fed meeting in the afternoon. Not a big deal, really, there. 
Thursday, the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims number. Philly Fed, leading indicators, natty gas. And Friday, just existing home sales and options expiration. So when I look at that, I think, well, you know, Mondays are usually kind of slow anyways. You never know if this market decides to pick up some speed any point here to the downside. But just in terms of projecting what I'm seeing here, Mondays are typically slow. I don't necessarily see a reason for much action unless we do just break on the market. Tuesday, a little more exciting. CPI, all this data uh, that could get things moving. Wednesday, not much for data, but it is the most likely day for options unraveling. And if they don't do it Wednesday, then Thursday, where there is a lot of data. So again, I think you know Tuesday through Thursday all have equal opportunity of being decent trading days this week. And Friday, with almost no data and options expiration, is probably not going to be very interesting. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal 12. If you've not yet taken the trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out. Certainly did this week. I'd like to help you out every week if you give us the opportunity. Have a great weekend. Have a great trading week. Again, there will be no market preview on YouTube on Monday. Everything will go into for Tuesday. Everything will go into report. And I'll be back Tuesday uh, afternoon, evening from driving home. Have a good one.